Hey guys, and welcome back to Regrets It. Brexit England, Northern Ireland and Eastern Europe. Crime, crime, crime is Boris Johnson's motto for this week. Really? A man who once arranged to have a journalist beaten up. A man who burnt a £50 note in front of a homeless person, which is a crime used to smash up restaurants while in the Bullingdon Club. <laughs> Been fined by the police for breaking Covid laws. <sighs> he runs, right, the building, right, that has had the most Covid fines, has broke the most Covid laws in this country. <laughs> right? Even his sidekick, you know, you know, him and Rishi Sunak, you know, are like Ronnie and Reggie. That's if Ronnie and Reggie were stepbrothers and looked nothing alike. Right? But these two are like Ronnie and Reggie. You know that Rishi Sunak's been fined as well. Right? And, you know, so the two of them find... We know Rishi Sunak, right, is up in there, right, doing all sorts of different nonsense for his wife and all that type of stuff. Do you know what I mean? You know, but they, it's all sort of dodgy stuff that, that, that they're getting up to. And this man has the cheek to talk about crime, crime, crime. Give me a break, right, when you have a criminal clown running the country, right, and his sidekick, right, is just as sleazy, right, and as corrupt as him. And he's talking about crime for the little people. And also, welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you so much for all your messages sent me. And a special thanks here to everybody who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that signed up. So thank you so much for that. I'll go through all your messages. I'll answer as many as I can. But I will like all your messages for definite. And then we start with, you know, look what we have in our government. Lawbreakers, liars, bullies, perverts rapists, paedophiles, sexists, racists, homophobics, islamophobics, anti-semitics, cheats. That represents our government and what a government it really is. It's an absolute clown show of a government but that's what's represented in our government so many different criminals we've got we've got what well, a Tory MP that has just been um he's just been found guilty of um of 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 you know interfering with a child you know a, you know uh, just a couple what about a month ago or so right you know there's you know there's we've got the other one who was in parliament you know watching porn and all this you know and, and there's you know there are there's, I think there's about 50 politicians, but this is cross-party. This is this is cross-party, but most of them will be Tories. You know, we're talking about Tor Tories in the 40s, right? But there's a 50, 50 odd MPs, right? So for, at least 40 of this number are Tories, right? And you know, who are under investigation for this and under investigation for that, or you know, they or they're facing or they're facing going to court for some, you know, for some reason. We've got we've got some by-elections coming up because the level of corruption. Right, you know, it's very similar, right, to the type of um, politicians that you're getting in America. Obviously, the Americans are, are a lot more extreme because they're like our, out, you know, they all of them seem to be like our MPs, but just on steroids, right? So we've got a lot of them, right, that are facing all these sort of different investigations and you know police charges, you know. So 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 much corruption in the Tory party. No wonder the country right, is in the state it's in. Basically it's fucked. But no wonder. And who do I blame for that? I blame you stupid ass racist motherfucking Brexiters for putting this clown show in. Right? Look, look, I'm enjoying the clown show. I will tell you, <laughs> I'm enjoying it, right? Because, do you know, you know the, the real reason I'm really enjoying this? Right, is because you right wing motherfuckers, you have made my life hell. My whole life has been hell down to you people, right? And you know something? This I call some African payback. Right? Even though, right, it's not us that's done it to you, even though you've done it to yourself, 
right, I'm still going to take the glory because I'm really pleased on how these people are treating you, right? And, you know, and what you've done to this country as well, because the only thing that can come out of this year is, you know, a proper rethink, right? And, you know, we might actually be able to get rid of, uh, you know, of like a good bulk of the racism in this country, right? Because of how low it's got and how low it's going to get. Because if you think things have got bad now, just wait, because things are only set to get so much worse, okay? Because these clowns, right, you know, they've lost control of the steering wheel because they took the steering wheel of the car while they was travelling at 120 miles an hour and they threw it out of the window. <laughs> and that's why they lost control of the car, because the brake lines was already cut, okay? And the car is stuck, right? in drive and it's doing 120 with no steering wheel and no brakes that that is where britain is that's where these guys have put britain so as i as i told you uh, i'm finding this funnier by the day by the day charles and camilla are in canada and they're like ah oh my god because there must be on the way there there must be no like, oh my god when are these people going to be towards us? Are they going to be like like those people, like those damn people in the Caribbean, right? Who are who are ungrateful, right? That he sent his son to the Caribbean to go and lord it over them, and they're ungrateful. How dare they be so ungrateful? Always get that from the blacks. That's what they're saying. That's what they're. That's what they were saying. I did hear them say that. That's what they were saying. But, so Charles and Camilla right, are in Canada and they have had a fantastic um, greeting. Because of course they would. Because you see the, Can the Canadians, yeah, they're like, you know, they're very much like the Americans, just without the steroids, <laughs> right? So they're much calmer, right? You know, which is why, they could, which is why they're okay to talk about what they, what they've done to the indigenous people over there. Right, you know, the Canadians are like, they're much more sombre about it. And, you know, the minute you start talking to them about it, they, you know, they, they hold their heads down in real shame because you can see that they really are ashamed of what, right? But they don't handle it like the Americans. Right? It's like, oh, well, you know, you know, you're blaming our kids for, you're blaming our kids for slavery. That's what you're doing, right? It's your fault, right? Not thinking, well, why is it that, we as black people are the only people who have to walk past statues of our previous slave masters. No other race of people in the world have to do that anywhere. We're the only ones who, who, who are expected to do it and we're expected to look at these statues and say, oh, hello, how are you? We're expected to do it. And when we complain about these, about right, former slave masters looking down upon us, right, we're told, well, yeah, it's because you don't love your country. And shit like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, well, you know, it's woke. They don't call us woke. They don't call black people woke for it. They call white people woke for it. You know, left-wing white people, oh, they're woke. But we're the only people who's expected to walk past these type of, these type of things. Why is that? You know, we, you know, you know, black and brown people are expected to watch you know, um, animals get put on aeroplanes in war zones as opposed to people. We're just expected to just watch that and just just accept it as it is. And, you know, oh, not let's talk about that. You know, and, you know, and they just, they just expect us to just say nothing about it. So you've got Charles and Camilla who have decided they're going to Canada. And yeah, you know, obviously Canada is, you know, Canada, the, the uh, you know, the Queen is the the monarch of Canada, and I believe the Canadians still want that situation to continue. You know, but you know, the, the only thing I can say about the Canadians, yeah, at least right, they're prepared to have the conversation, right, and not get irate about it, as if to say, well, you know, it was the it was the slaves' fault for being slaves. You know, at least they're prepared to have the conversation about it, right? Which you know, 
That's why I've, that, you know. That's why I've, I've always I've always quite liked Canada. You know, especially for, especially for that reason. I think they've got a very dark past because you know the, the the mass graves that they're digging up. I mean, they haven't even done that in America, and you know there are plenty of mass. I mean, there's there's going to be a lot more mass graves in America because you know they, they had to you know they had to do something with the, with the natives. So there's going to be so, so there are going to be so many mass graves. But I mean, you know, I can't recall them ever digging any you know or even trying to dig any up or even having the conversation of digging any up. You know, they're just all they're interested in is, oh, you will not replace us like anybody wants to re like anybody's trying to replace them in the first place. You know what they're trying to, you know, I don't I don't believe how fragile right, the you know, the, the right wing, the right wing white mind seems to be very, very fragile. Right. You know, scared, you know, oh, you try to replace us. Oh, you know, you know, critical race, critical race therapy, all of these nonsense theory critical race theory all of these nonsense right that these people are talking about it's all just a load of garbage right you know these people they seem to be very weak and very very fragile i think that's what they that's that's what their problem is is the weakness and the fragility right and it seems to run through their mind it seems to course through their mind in a way that you just think to yourself how do you come to, how do you come up with this nonsense how do you seriously come up with this nonsense? You know, just look at this. Just look at this child, right? Who's gone in and murdered those, you know, the, the people in Buffalo. And when I've seen the people, you know, the youngest was like the, the youngest was thirty-two, right? And you know, the oldest, I think she was like eighty-six years old. Wow! Well, just how how do you how do you get to there, right? And you know, you read through this guy's manifesto, and his manifesto is, you know, the the. He's scared that, that that black people are trying to replace, you know, white people. You think, well, really? You know that that's they've been. You know how long they've been saying that for, right? So now, because he's eighteen years old, right? There's a good chance he might live to a hundred years old. Right? So he's going to say, so, say, so could do eighty. So you were talking about like eighty-two years in prison. Right. You know, they'll probably get, you know, you know, once he, you know, if he gets to, if he gets to 80 years old, you know, or, you know, 90, they'll probably let him out at that type, at that type of age, you know, but, you know, you're, you're still talking, you know, so you're talking about his whole life is gone, right, but if he gets to 100 years old, right, he will be able to see for himself, right, that white people haven't been replaced, and what the hell is he going to think then? You know, well, you have to say, well, what, what's he going to think in like, in five years' time or in ten years' time? When he can look and see that that white people haven't been replaced and no one is actually trying to replace them, you know. But these these guys have been doing this right from since you know the the end of slavery. They've been they've been doing this, and you think to yourself, how much longer? Right? When when does it when is it going to look like that we're actually re trying to replace you? When is that stage going to come that we look like we're actually trying to replace you? Because you know you know I haven't seen it. I haven't. You know, and I just think well, if you're that scared of your race being replaced, just go and impregnate as many white women as you can. I mean, that would be the better way, right? Rather than going and murdering ten black people, I mean, it, you know, you'd have a lot more. You'd have had a lot more fun, but over the years, a very horrible situation. But Charles, Charles and Camilla in Canada, inflation has reached nine percent. And I'm sure we knew. I'm sure we knew, yeah, that this was going to happen. That we knew that um, we was going to get to this type of um, level of inflation. Boris Johnson, from day one, right, from before Boris Johnson was prime minister, right, I always knew that Boris Johnson was going to be an absolutely horrendous prime minister. If he was ever given the chance, because I would have never, I didn't think that anybody would give Boris Johnson the actual chance to be prime minister. And you know, people, oh, people, people will say to me, oh, "Well, it's just because you don't like Boris anyway." So, well, but he's lived up to my expectations. 
right? You know, we're now at inflation of nine percent, and all of the, all of this, right, is down to Boris Johnson, right? You know, especially you know, especially where the country's gone to now, right? This country, we, we was always going to get to this stage. We was always going to be here, right? But Boris Johnson's accelerated it, right? By by probably twenty years. Right, he, you know, because Boris Johnson's only been in for he's only been in for two years, and as I keep I keep on trying to tell people, he's done more than a hundred years worth of damage in two short years. That's the reason why we've accelerated. You know that 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 twenty years. What I'm talking about. That's the reason why we've accelerated that fast because the amount of damage that Boris Boris Johnson has done. You cannot do this much damage to a country, right, without feeling the, without feeling the real effects. And the, the, the thing is, most of the time, yeah, you don't feel real effects from most prime ministers, but we're feeling the real effects with Boris Johnson in real time. This type of thing normally happens after they've gone. Right, you know, you get the, you get the real worst of you get the real worst of it. But with Boris Johnson, everything's happening in real time for us. So, so that's the reason why, yeah, we're at nine percent in, inflation. And that's you know, the Bank of England saying the Bank of England say by the end of the year they're talking about ten percent. But I'm you know I I say it's going to be much higher than that. It's going to be a, it's going to be a few percent higher than that. Right, because as, I, as you know, just tell, try, I try and explain to people, Boris Johnson, right, and and the, and this government have lost complete control of the economy, complete control of it. Right, so you know, so that's the reason why we're at this. And now, you know, you, you got, you know, I, I keep trying to tell people, yeah, that these people they treat us like we're their pets, right? We are their nothing. Right, you know, we're you know we're we're not even the pawns. We're not even the pawns on the board. We're not even that, right? We're lesser, right? Look, look. Yesterday they had a vote, right, on you know on um, this windfall tax, which windfall tax would be a complete crap idea anyway, because you know they don't they only put it back onto our bills anyway. So it's not like you know it's not like they're going to come up to us and give us like hundreds of or thousands of pounds, right? It's going to be it's going it's going to be yeah, a few quid. It's gonna be a few quid. It's gonna be nothing, right? And then it's gonna be bung back straight onto our on, onto our bills anyway, right? So you know, when when you're a government and you're not in control of the of your comp of your country's energy, right? This is why we are. This is this is this is the main reason why we are where we are because they are not in control of. It. If they was in control of of it, yeah, then they could set the price. They would have storage. If they was in control, they'd have loads of storage. Right, and they'll be able to they'll be able to to see you through this through this. But you've got you've got shareholders in you know in the gas companies. You've got shareholders, and shareholders need to be paid. Shareholders don't give a shit about people riding around on the bus at seventy seven years old because they can't heat their house. Shareholders don't care about that. They're not interested. You know, so that's why all of these energy companies are now making extra and extra profits. Right, and you say well. How can you be making? How can you say you're you're making so much extra profits, right? And in, and the next breath you say, well, you have to pay more money. I say, well, why don't you just make no profits for now or less profits for now, right? So that you know, you know, so, so that something that we need for survival of life, we can get. But no, because they don't care because the, and the government's not in control of it, right? So. That's the reason why inflation is hitting these high levels. All right? And Tory MPs could say, well, no, we vote against a windfall tax because the truth is, right, we don't give a fuck about these people's lives. They're just, they're, 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 they're our nothings. We don't care about them. Right? We don't care about the hardship. We don't care about disabled people being outside the KFC begging for food. That's not their business. What do they care about that for? It's not their business. Right. Why would they care about that? You know, and then we go back to the criminality of the of the Tories, right? Because a Tory MP overnight has been arrested for rape and is still held up in the police station all now. And they said to him, You know what? Do not come back to Parliament. But I'm quite sure they couldn't have actually told him yet because, you know, but they actually of course they could, because you know, some very influential people could have got probably got in there to see to see this Tory MP and you know if he's been arrested in his own area you know then obviously he would you know he would be like you know um 
very good friends with like the local chief inspector you know and all you know all you know the the, the local you know um superintendents and all these type of people would 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 know would know them on a first first name basis but from what i hear this could be mp andrew rosendale of romford and i'll tell you something yeah if it is that's just like poetic justice because this is the same bitch ass who thinks it's okay to say bollocks right like the people who needed the 20 pound uplift they don't need that money it's just something that they wanted to have just something they want to have what they need it for right you know they don't oh, they don't you know they're the lowest earners in the country so what the hell could they do with an extra 20 pounds a week right but his colleagues his mp colleagues right who when he was asked about their second jobs oh they need their second jobs because they've got families so people who've got the 20 pound uplift they ain't got no families but they have but he doesn't care about their families because he thinks their families are shit right he thinks their families are something that he scrapes off the bottom of his shoes that's what he thinks of their families right and i'm just you know if it's him I say, good, you motherfucking ass. That serves your motherfucking fool all right. <laughs> I'll be stop telling you. If it's Andrew Rosendale, yeah, and there's a, there's a lot of charges as well because, you know, there's some miscon mis mis um, conduct in a public office and I think some sexual assaults and all them things there. But if it is him, right, it just shows you the hypocritical nature of him because I'm sure that he's the same one who said that, you know, um, rapists should be castrated and they should hold him to his words, right, and cut off his exceptionally small penis. That's what they should do. <laughs> The Queen opened a new tube station yesterday. Uh, they named it after her. That's why she opened it. And they give her her own Oyster card. Probably will never use it. Right? And if I was there, I would have said, Your Majesty, could I get that Oyster card? And then you would have found it on eBay a couple of hours later. <laughs> it actually would have been on eBay. <laughs> That's how the Queen, yeah. So after missing her, um, the Queen's speech at the State Open of Parliament, which is her job, right? She decides to, she was going to go partying over the weekend, right, with a lot of celebrities and a lot of people who was praising her. And then she goes to open her tube line that's named after her. But the important stuff, she's just like, nah. Not really feeling that speech. Not feeling that at all. And plus, it's a load of bollocks. So I'm not interested in it. And then we move on to our, our favourite, Pencil Lick Tin Lizzie Trust Herself, right? Who has, who has asked, oh, she has asked for a trusted trader scheme. She's asked the EU, if, 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 if she's gone to the EU and said to them, please, pretty please, could you please, 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 please give us a break on this because she did give them 48 hours to comply and that imaginary watch that's gone the 48 hours that she gave can you believe how stupid these people are making us look this uh, is really making us look really really weak and pathetic like a bunch of losers idiots racist fools that's you right bigoted, xenophobic, sexist, misogynistic idiots. That's how these people are making us look. You know, threatening the EU and then not going through with it. How much times have we heard about, oh, you're going to trigger Article 16, right? You don't comply with us. Well, see what happens. You see what happens, EU, right? Come, in fact, EU, we throw down our jacket, come around the corner, EU, come on, let's go around the corner. And the E walk around and they're like, well, uh, uh, I've got to go home because uh, my dad called me on the mobile. I said, but your mobile's in your jacket that you've thrown on the floor. Yeah, but it was before we, I offered you out. It was before that my dad called me. So I'm going to go and see him, but I'll be back, EU. I'll be back. We look so stupid. We look foolish. Right? And now, e, now, now Liz Truss has said, the EU, you know, can you set up a trusted trader scheme? 
Okay. Doesn't really mean much because, you know, I'm sure, quite sure it's something that <laughs> you're just like, well, no, we can't really do that. And um, furthermore, <laughs> and furthermore, the EU have threatened the trade war, right? If Britain continues down the lines it's going down, right? Where Britain continues to threaten the EU, right? Especially with the Irish protocol, because that's all they've got, because, you know, they've got. Um, let me just think. Nothing else. Right? Where the EU have got so many different strings that they can pull. They can pull strings all over the place, the EU. I mean, they can actually make, you know, they can make things so much worse. Obviously, if we're going to, you know, but just look how things are at the moment, right? Where where, where our traders are finding it very, very difficult to trade with, within the EU. That is, that's them, right? with their just their normal rules imagine if we're going to a trade war with them imagine what the damage what would happen then because they would just completely destroy britain when i say to completely destroy they'll just completely destroy because there'd be no movement of any goods right? it would be so difficult right because and then and then there'd be tariffs there'd be any there'd be tariffs right on any goods that britain want to sell within the eu there'd be tariffs on it Right. And, you know, in the same way, in the same way that we'll say, well, well, we could put tariffs on them. Well, the tariffs that we put on them will only affect us. Yeah? It won't affect them. It will only affect us. Because remember, yeah, they have they, they have all the power. Right? However you look at it. Right. So if 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 we put tariffs on them, they will just say, well, if you want the goods, well, you still want the goods. Well, you have to pay those tariffs. Right, and now goods going over, right? They'll just say to our traders, "Well, if you want to sell us those goods, right, then you have to pay those tariffs, or we'll just get those goods elsewhere in in the EU." Right, we haven't got time to mess about with you. So everything is in the EU's hands. Nothing's in our hands. Nothing at all. Right, we've got no power at all in this. Absolutely none. Because we've put, and we've put ourselves in this position because of you racist fools. So we've put ourselves in this position. You know, we we are like let me just think of let me just think of someone who's equally as stupid. The DUP. Equally as stupid as England. Equally as stupid. And what are they both? Right wing. Both right wing, right? And equally as stupid. Because I'm telling you, right? For them to try and, and mess around with the Irish protocol, right? You would have to be just most one of the most stupid people in the world to think to yourself, well, you know what, yeah? Because, right, we are British, right? That's the reason why we can sign a contract, right? And then expect you will change it. We expect you to do exactly what we want and you will change it for us. Because we're British, right? And we're exceptional. That's how these people think. And I think you have to, you know, you can only have the right wing mind to think in such a ridiculous way. Right? The EU might the EU could you know might compromise with, with a with a, with a couple of bits of things, right? But you know, why would you put yourself you know if you don't believe in your mind, right, that I am better than you, and that's why I can tell you, right, that you know what? I can sign the contract, but you know what? I can come back and I can change it later. But I can do that because we're better than you. The whole reason why we left the EU in the first place because we thought we was better than these people, right? And now, if you think we can go into a trade war with the EU, you've got a real another thing coming, right? If Boris Johnson, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, look, I'm going to be straight with you, right? I hope that Boris Johnson does this, right? Because I really want to see those, I really want to see those right wing tears. I really want to see those right. I really want, really want to see those right wing tears because, as I said, things are only set to get much, much worse. Right? The DUP is not playing ball. They're not playing ball with Boris Johnson. Right? Boris Johnson's not playing ball with the DUP because the DUP want the Irish Protocol scrapped because they want that border right between Britain and an Ireland gone, Northern Ireland gone. They want that border gone. They'd like it on the other side, really. Right, but they want it gone, and they don't want to go into government until it's gone. Boris Johnson cannot get rid of it, right, without kicking off a trade war with the EU. And if Boris Johnson kicks off a trade war with the EU, I say, "Well, be tied his ass." 
right? Because I think I think even the even the you know the the you know the most loyal Boris Johnson fan, right? I'm talking about the one who's got like you know the 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 cardboard cut out of his ass, right? That's what I'm talking about, right? Even they would have to look at Boris Johnson and think, wow, this man is a fucking complete catastrophe a clown an idiot that's what even the most hardcore boris johnson right, if boris johnson right was to trigger a trade war because you would rarely see right the eu because the eu haven't been bearing their teeth they've been really nice to us right considering that we told them you know what piss off they've been really nice to us in the circumstances right because you know if it was me in those circumstances, right, I would be deliberately hurting you anyway, deliberately, if you said to me, you know what, you can piss off, don't want to be with you, hate you, and we're better than you. And the Northern Ireland Protocol isn't the problem. Brexit is the problem. So say the Guardian, and so say I. And I have gone way off my time again. So, my friends, I have to bow out of here again. This, my friends, is by any means necessary. I'm MC John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below.